Today, I want to talk about the fact that your skill within a game or within anything is a range. Nobody uh, does everything at the same level all of the time. And that may seem obvious, uh, but let's let's talk about it a little bit because it's a really powerful thing for improving. Uh, I drew a little graphic. Let's pop it up. And you can see this bell curve showing the distribution of your play, of my play, of anyone's play, right? So you have over on the left here, bad play. This is your lowest MMR play. This is what takes you down and <laughs> makes you feel like uh, you're not quite as good as you want to be. Uh, your absolute worst play, right? And then you have kind of in the middle, this would be your more average MMR, your more average quality of play where you're not necessarily kicking yourself, but you don't feel like you're playing your absolute best. And then, of course, up at the top over on the right would be your best play, which kind of provides you a, a bunch of your MMR and the, your peaks and everything. And that's when you feel like you're really on fire and and you're playing very well. A lot of people like to want to identify with their best play with their MMR peaks, but that's not very realistic and that's not a good way to really move forward and get better, right? You have to look at yourself as this kind of complete package of a player, as all, all players are. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what causes each of these levels of play and how you can kind of work on your game. Uh, so first up, uh, we have the low rank plays, your worst plays, right? What are the reasons for this? It can it can be a, a whole variety of things, but here's here's some of the ideas, right? Like it could be strategies that you're specifically poor against. It could be just certain situations that you find yourself within the game that are difficult. Uh, it also can be something having to do with like emotional control with lack of confidence you know it, losing streaks for instance are those are a real thing and a lot of times i can tell you from my experience when i get on a losing streak my confidence starts to go away it erodes the play even more and yeah that can definitely be a part of that uh then let's look at reasons for your best play your highest rank play well these would be when you're playing for instance against strategies that you already know how to beat or you are in situations that you really understand deeply. Like you, you look at the situation and say, oh, I know exactly what to do here, right? And you go and do it and you find yourself ahead. You find yourself winning. Uh, also, it's kind of the opposite of those low streaks, of those, those worst plays and those worst days, right? Is if you're on a winning streak, if you're building some confidence, if you're feeling great on that day, you're wide awake and on top of everything, uh, that, that emotional help can make you play better as well. Uh, that's definitely a big aspect of this. So looking at those two ends of the spectrum of your play, you have to think about what do you want to do to actually improve? Well, there's two, I guess, main ways of improving your play if you look at it through this lens, right? You can work on your best play, which would be your strengths, right? We can improve those so that our highest high gets even higher. And that can be great and that can feel great. Uh, and it definitely is useful because, I mean, that's how you're going to kind of move up your peaks. But of course... That, that can have a, a backside to it, too, if you only work on that. Uh, the reverse of that, of course, is working on your worst play, your weaknesses. Uh, and that's kind of filling in the holes that you have in your game to give yourself a bit more stability in your range. Uh, this is something that um, Jared Tendler wrote about in The Mental Game of Poker. I would definitely suggest checking out that book if you are interested in this type of thing. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, but let's... Let's talk about ways to actually improve both of these because they're both actually very, very important, right? So if you want to improve your best play, what are some ways you can do that? Well, uh, learning a new meta strategy, right, can make you even stronger at your peak. Uh, so that would be something like, for instance, recently in StarCraft 1, uh, there's been a lot of uh, evolutions of the crazy Zerg tactic. Uh, in Zerg versus Terran. So like, for instance, if you kind of look into that and you figure out how to play that, that because it's meta and no one's really doing that well against it, that's going to that's gonna increase your peak a bit, right? That's going to make you do a bit better. Uh, there's also refining and optimizing builds 
which of course would be builds that you already know very, very well. So those should already kind of be at your peak, right? So you can take a build that you do all the time and say, oh, wow, you know, I can, I can cut a gateway here to get my Nexus a little bit quicker and still hit my unit benchmark that I want by a certain time, right? To hold a common timing push. Uh, and of course, like, as I mentioned, by definition, this would be a build that you already know very well, so it should already kind of be at your peak. So to add in these little optimizations to make that a little bit more fluid, to make that a little bit stronger, that's another great way to continue to improve your ceiling. Um, and yeah, uh, so I guess that's, that, as far as improving the ceiling, it's, it's things kind of like that, right? Working on your strengths, it's like, oh, well now I can max out 10 seconds quicker something like that right so uh those ones are are pretty obvious let's talk about improving your worst play though right so for instance learning how to deal with something that you lose to a lot or that you have trouble with so this would be something that is very easy to find in your play if you just like look at any losing game and just kind of take a look at them in general and say like oh Okay, well, uh, in Terran versus Protoss, I have a hard time against Zealot rushes, right? Whenever anyone's pressuring me there. Well, you can sit down and practice your Marine Micro and, and really get a hold on that. That's going to stabilize you, right? That's going to help uh, bring up that floor where you're having a hard time in that early game. Suddenly, you can become very good at that, and that's going to do a lot to increase the worst side of your play. Uh, there's also expanding your understanding of a situation. So... A lot of times, if you get emotional in a situation in a game, it's because you don't fully understand. This is actually a great way uh, to find out what needs improvement is if you start feeling emotion involved. Like if you know actually exactly what's going wrong in a situation, a lot of times you just think to yourself, oh, yeah, no, OK, I screwed that up. Yeah, that was that was a mistake. Uh, but if you start finding yourself getting really angry, like, oh, I can't beat this. And I mean, <laughs> definitely I'm someone who has done this a lot in the past as well. That means that you're missing some part of the understanding of it. So uh, kind of expanding the understanding of a situation. Like, for instance, if you're getting busted by maxed out Protoss a lot, take a look at it, okay? Expand your understanding. This is actually something that uh, helped me out a long time ago, maybe, I don't know, six months before I made this video or something, or I, I don't know the exact time, but it was basically like, okay, there's a lot of Protoss busts happening. Well, Protoss maxed attacks come at 12 minutes. So you have to have 140 supply in position at 12 minutes. Bam, there you go. Oh my God, that expanding of that understanding clears up very much and allows you to practice in the right direction to kind of fix that hole in your play. Uh, also working on that emotional control, right? Uh, like I kind of mentioned uh, before, emotions can play into it, like a losing streak, a winning streak. These are, these are important things. There could be things that get you very frustrated within a game like StarCraft. I know there are for me. Like, for instance, if a probe is coming up and harassing, that's something that kind of puts you on tilt. Uh, kind of working on that and letting yourself know that, like, hey, this is part of the game. This is something that happens. Let's try not to tilt there and just deal with it as it comes. Another thing that I see a lot within uh, StarCraft is if anything goes wrong in the early game, a lot of people just go all in from there, right? Uh, so that, while occasionally that is the right choice to do if something goes wrong, uh, don't forget that StarCraft is a battle of who's making fewer mistakes. So even though you made a mistake, you know your opponent will be making mistakes as well. No one plays perfect games. So that's definitely something else uh, that can be worked on. Uh, so I think using these two different angles and really focusing on one at a time is a great way to improve. Yes, it's great to learn new strategies and to get better at the things you're already good at to get those higher MMR peaks, to, to beat those better players that were out of your reach before, but it's going to expand your range, right? You want to bring up that tail as well. You want to shore in your weaknesses. And the more that you shore in your weaknesses, the more often you're going to get into situations where you can play your best. So it's really important to do both sides. You don't want to sit at the top end of your range forever at the same exact number because you'll never beat anyone better. So that being said, right, you need to improve that, but also remember to improve the weak parts of your play and bring that up as well. All right. Hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching.